Okay, it's happening. Don't come in here. Hmm? We are not. <laughs> Okay, now we gotta get the chef on. Who's that? I don't Hello, know. Chef. <laughs> Hi, friends. Ba, ba, ba. It's gonna give people some time to get in, including the chef. Oh? Chef is here. It's booted up. Hi, Katie. Hi, everyone else I missed. Angela, you have Shut up. I'm drinking it all, all together, Kelly. So it felt like the only right thing to do today. Uh, so well, that's the only thing you can do. Yeah, right? We're all in this together, Rocky. <laughs> I know. How you doing? I'm doing. I'm doing. How's, Just about to how's my sous chef doing? Uh, Nicolette's chilling. She's she's hiding in the background. Hey, you're hey, on Nicolette. <laughs> Woo! Um, just about to explain to everyone what we're doing. Um, so I was trying to kind of figure out how we could give back, uh, as you know, with COVID nineteen going on and everything. Everyone's kind of hurting right now. Um, a lot of people have lost their jobs, too many people, and Rock and I were kind of going back and forth trying to figure out what we have in common and which group we could kind of do what we can to help people right. need that we're both connected to. Um, so what we came up with was I reached out to a whole bunch of people. I don't know if she's in here, but shout out to Jamie for putting me in contact with Alicia. Jamie! Um, we are basically going to cook for you. Rock sent me an ingredient list that I have prepared everything but i have no idea what we're cooking and <laughs> from from there hopefully that's typical to... dan <laughs> yeah I, I just follow instruction i'm really good at it for years we've been doing you've this. cooked for me before <laughs> it's been a while some beets dogs <laughs> sure those french fries were incredible <laughs> double fried that's the you make the absolute <laughs> best pretzels and um heavily salted that's the way you do it yes with the with the right amount of mustard <laughs> so if people are entertained at the end of this uh we're asking there's a link in our bio hopefully you feel at least a little entertained and can spare a couple dollars we're raising money for the red island hospitality fund um it's the relief fund that they're basically money is going to everyone that's bartenders cooks chefs waiters everything connected to the great cause country. And the main reason we're doing this and that we chose Rhode Island, I don't know how many people know Rock in here, but Rock is located in San Diego. We've done a whole bunch of work together in the mm -hmm. past, and Rock got his culinary start at Johnson & Wales. So between me That's and right. I growing up in Rhode Island, Rock starting his culinary journey here, we kind of felt that it was only right to give back to those people that sparked our love of food. Yes, and and I, and I thank you for bringing me in on this because uh, we still have a lot of connections at Johnson & Wales. Yeah. And um, so, you know, anything we could do, because I'm sure a lot of those people that are working in the hospitality industry in Rhode Island, you know, probably went to Johnson & Wales, you yeah. know? Yeah. Greatest More culinary school around. That, for sure. Yeah. You know, it's funny, Dan, I got to tell you, you know, um, since it's only uh, 4.30 here, I thought I was going to go outside and uh, there was a little park. <laughs> so I, I, I go out there, I got my scarf on, I get out there and it's like a freaking typhoon out there. It's like heavily wind blowing. The three and, uh, California. So, so I, I ran back to the house. I literally got here at like two minutes before you went live. Nope. So I'm just kind of getting time. settled. My wife just gave me a pillow to throw under my, my elbow. There Honey, I don't go. need that right no. now. <laughs> oh, it's too high. No, it's not. Once you get your own. My head is too big for this screen. Okay. It's called tilt. Honey, we're live. Hi. Hi. Yes, Denise yes, said hi. Welcome. We'll funny? go pour some wine. What are you waiting on? Okay. Yes, honey. Uh, Happy hour. Uh, right, Dan? I'm the Zoom uh, master. Join us. Yeah, we're not Zooming, though. We're, we're Instagramming. Okay. Oh, Nicole, let's have some Same wine. Picturing. Let's, uh, what do you say we get started, Dan? You're probably wondering what the heck kind of dish I uh, picked for you. Yes, so we were, we were kind of going through what you had us prepare. Okay. Uh, Nicolette and I had some, had some guesses. Uh, okay, throw them out there. Let me hear. 
first guess is I think we're doing either bruschetta or garlic bread. I don't know. If well, that's well, part that's part of it. Yeah, the garlic yeah. bread. You we got that right. We get down the final final dish aside from I. My throw was that we're doing stir fry, but I'm not positive. So I'm, it's it's I'm close. Gonna I'm not going to tell you. I'm going to let no, it create. And reveal it at the end. <laughs> Yeah, so, you know, let's get started. The first thing um, you're going to have to do is uh, get your, uh, well, we can, you know what, let's do the garlic bread first, since you already know that, that what it is. So what did you get? Nice, a nice loaf of Italian bread? Purchased at Dave's Market, because we love Rhode Island. <laughs> Hi, Nicolette. Hi, Rock. How's it going? I'm doing good. How you doing? I'm getting closer. I'm trying to give you a kiss on the cheek. Aw, thank you. How you doing, you. darling? Oh, I am good. I have got some wine oh. ready to go. Well, you know what? Wine is fine. Wine is better. So, Dan, what do you have there? A loaf of bread? Nice bread. Yeah, don't slice it. Slice it lengthwise, like through the middle. Yeah, not not in slices. No, no, the other way. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Easy there, Ben. Easy there, cowboy. Yeah, but from the side. From the side. In half. Like a sandwich. Yeah, like you're making a giant Sammy. No, on the side. No. No. Like, well, it helps that I can't see you. There. This this way. That's fine. Lengthwise. I should have been more descriptive. The other length. Yeah, a different length. Like this way you get this way you get a nice you know a wide slice of bread not individual and then you only have to toast one side there you go Put that down the middle. now did you uh make the butter warm or not really warm but soft it, yeah it's been sitting on the counter for a while so we shouldn't get on that okay it'll probably spread nice uh spread it on top of the uh, both sides I mean, there's a couple of ways to go. I mean, you can melt it in a pan, throw the garlic in, cook it up a little bit if you want with a little oregano and a little olive oil. But this is this is like the easy method. How do you prefer it? Well, for for you, <laughs> no, don't take that the wrong way. Um, <laughs> yeah, go ahead. You could uh, spread it or cook that. I can do it. Yeah, just spread it. Just spread it like you're you know yeah you you're making bread toast in the morning. I don't do that. I don't wake up in the morning. Okay, that's right. And you don't need toast either, do you? <laughs> uh, Dan, your sister wants to tell you that it's a bit early to be struggling with the instructions. <laughs> yeah, I saw that. <laughs> <laughs> the heckling, I'm encouraging it. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. Well, spread it out. You don't have to, uh, you know, you're not painting a house. Just get it on there. Uh, and then... So, uh, I'm trying to do my best here. But... Spread it, Dan. I'm telling you to spread it, Dan. Spread that. Spread thing. it. Yeah, there you go. The butter too. <laughs> then put then put that spread that garlic on there. Atta boy. Make sure that how how uh, minced did you do the garlic? How minced? It's very fine. Okay, on. perfect. Nicolette. Make sure you spread it out and it gets cut. You know, stuck into that butter so it doesn't fall off. And make it even all the way through. Oh, perfect. Dan did a great job of yeah. Make sure. For, I was going to say. Remember, we're using some in the first in the uh, main dish too. Yeah, um, we put so. it into two. I was having a, a little deja vu rock. Yeah. As I was doing oh. the garlic, all I can remember was head of the Charles, where I had to separate like. Oh. Already <laughs> but we had like twenty, like I don't know. There had to be like two hundred cloves of garlic. I had to cut it up. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that, Dan. I always <laughs> have. I have a lot of people that help me over the years. They go, "Why did you like make me whip the cream by hand when we had a blender or we had a <laughs> electric whip?" Yeah, you, know, you don't worry about it. It's you know what? Do it the old-fashioned way. We care about quality here. Yeah, come on over here. So, Dan, it shouldn't take you twenty minutes to do the the bread and the butter. So get that done. <laughs> this is a five-hour show. <laughs> So get that garlic spread evenly. Nothing else to do. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Well, it's only four thirty here. I'm in California, you know. So we got, yeah. so you, you know, got about play. three hours. I haven't even, I haven't even thought about what I'm making for dinner yet, buddy. I'll send you. Now something. you're inspiring me. You don't need to cook. 
I, I was just going to say, you're going to, you know, this is my virtual dinner. Okay. So you got, you got that on there, the garlic? Yep. Nice. And then a little, uh, what do you have, some shredded Parmesan? Yeah, we do. Sprinkle that on there. Oh, we got Kate from Hawaii. Aloha, sister. Bye, Kate. My, my well, wahini. So good. So if you put a little Parmesan on there, put that on a cookie sheet, and we're not going to cook it just yet. That will be the last thing you do. You want me to preheat the oven? Yeah, you put it on a cookie sheet, piece of foil on it if you want, so you don't have to wash. And then uh, turn so the broiler do I, on. Do I have to preheat the oven around? Well, you would do the broiler. Aloha, Kate. Yeah, you don't have to do the broiler just yet because that's going to uh, – this is going to take a little while to cook. Nice and So that's good. So that's easy, cheesy. Uh, I mean, you could enhance it and go full bore with, as I said, melt that butter in a pan with a little of the garlic and the olive oil. And I like to put a little oregano in there and uh, basil and, you know, then hit the par always. I always put the Parmesan on top afterwards. I don't know. It's just something cheesy I told. Cheesy bread. I support it. Yeah. It's like a cheesy bread. So, Dan, are you ready to start cooking? I'm ready. Wow, you got a what, beautiful cast iron pan? That's the plan. Working nice. Well, get that sucker hot. We need it hot. All right. Get it going, pre-going. So let's kind of go through the ingredients for the people that are watching uh, that have no clue what we're making. Bring it maybe, on. And maybe they can guess. So what do you have over there, Dan? We got our, uh, our cubed sirloin tips. Okay. They look nice. Nice, nice. Our thinly sliced onion. Right. Uh, we have some sliced mushrooms here, some crushed red tomato. Okay. Red wine action. Uh, Kalamata olives. Mm hmm. We're working with olive oil, crushed red pepper, salt, pepper, oregano, parsley, and more garlic. Nice. Nice. And we have more cheese if we really want to add some cheese to whatever this is. <laughs> well, well, actually, the cheese will go on top at the end. Perfect. You know, and I'll have to tell you, this dish was, uh, I created it years and years ago, but it is a, a dish that was inspired by a trip to Boston. Mm -hmm. uh, all my buds from, you know, college, you know, Ron oh. Russian, Pud, Lobster Head. We all had, we all had nicknames. <laughs> we all, it's not like a bunch of cartoons, you know. We, we had Pud, Russian, <laughs> Lobster Head, Fluff. Rock. Come on. And then Rock. <laughs> and then rock, and a few others that I won't name that are <laughs> obscene, <laughs> not, not politically correct the nowadays. Keep the PG. I know I didn't name them. No, they weren't dirty. They were anyway. It doesn't matter. So so hello to everyone anyway, if they're if they're watching. Uh, let's see if I forgot anybody in my old age. So you feel the heat coming through that pan because that pan takes a little while to heat up. Uh, it's getting hot quick. Okay, so let's do this. Let's get that olive oil in there. Sounds good. Enough to coat the pan a little bit. Let's get that garlic. Let's throw that garlic in. You're only going to cook it for 30 seconds. Make sure you have a, a wooden spoon to mix it around so that they don't burn. Do you remember what I taught you about garlic Keep when you moving. cook it? Do you remember? Keep it moving. Keep it moving and not more than 30 seconds. Because you're going to cook other ingredients in there, but if it's just the oil and the garlic, once it starts getting beyond brown, it gets bitter. Right, and it'll so ruin, ruin your dish. So put it in and, yeah, put it in there and move it around, Dan. Make it dance. That's the plan. You know Keep I love moving dancing. my Dan elbow. There we go. Can I see in the pan a little? Yeah, there you go. Hey, bring, bring it on over here. Give me a second. <laughs> Is it starting to sizzle a little bit, the garlic? Sizzle. Do you remember what, um, Mr. Donnelly? Uh oh, we got the boss on. Uh, he, the boss he, is watching us. I, was nervous. <laughs> I know. He's well, he he's gonna check to see if you're listening uh, to my instructions over the years. He can't fire me. I already am jobless. <laughs> <laughs> so once that's starting to move a little, that's about thirty seconds. Uh, you can throw the onions in. Onions and the mushrooms. You got it, Bob. And keep it cooking. Onions. 
Yes. Mushrooms. Mushrooms. Do you have uh, enough oil in there? Did, I didn't see how much you put in, in the, at first. Um, use that sock covered oil that looks like mustard over there. Um, fun fact, my mother keeps uh, oil oh, in a mustard container. Well, you know what? I, it's very creative. Just don't put it on your hot dog by accident. Yeah, no, not as tasty. The show is brought to uh, if we ever get sponsored. Is it? Is that Nike? Yeah. So you so you have Nike oil? It's an old sock. <laughs> hey, actually, I like that. I like that. So uh, if you remember correctly, uh, Dan, from my years of tutelage uh, with you, uh, the uh, onions and the mushrooms, remember when the, what the word saute means? It means to jump. Yeah. So basically keep everything moving around. Yeah. And uh, you'll see them start to cook. They'll cook down. They'll get translucent. Say, we're, not, we're not sweating here. We're sauteing. Not, not, no, exactly right. Because it, what happens when you sweat, the liquid comes out. We don't want that. So is it, you can hear them sizzling. I can hear the sizzle now. So if you want, you can throw that orega, a little more. Yeah, you'll see mushrooms are very absorbent. So when you're sauteing mushrooms, that's why you want to do them on high, because they'll just keep soaking up that oil. Uh, you keep them bouncing around. And if you want, you can put the oregano in now. Now, remember, you're using dry. Ah! Hey, Nicholas. <laughs> <laughs> All it's on Nicolette instead of the side I, I turned the screen on me by accident. That's okay. Hey, my sister's on. Hey, Lee. She's going to be watching you now. Yeah, it's like making it happy. You're right, Chris. Chris is like, you know, throwing some extra words into the term, which is perfect. Just in case I anyone, right now, but I heard what you said about anyone that needs to know, it smells really good in this kitchen right now. Uh, nice. Well, that's the whole idea, you know, especially if you're going to be home for two months. <laughs> and uh, so, so Dan, yeah. put, put the oregano in. Now, I was going to say about the oregano – you're using dry, are you using dried oregano or fresh? Dry. Dry. Dry is going to be more concentrated, stronger than fresh. So I think I, I, I called for what, a teaspoon in there. Yeah. What do I got? Yeah, a tablespoon. We're just going to have to live with oregano now. So a little trick, Dan. You can put the spoon down, get the oregano, put it between your palms, and give it a crush. That will release some of the oils that are in that dried oregano. I've and you can, you, <laughs> oh, you know what? Uh, for future dishes, <laughs> you're not drinking enough. You're not drinking enough beer, Dan. That's the problem. I'm not. <laughs> well, here's the magic part. I can see some uh, steam coming off of uh, the pan now. It's looking yep. pretty good. Yep. Good. Now you have your meat. You trimmed it up. It looked pretty nice. So we're working with. Yeah, so if you want push, I would, for now, just push all the onions and, the gar and uh, mushrooms to one side a little bit. Because you still want to cook them with this in there. But you want to make sure your pan's on high heat. Can I throw meat in? Yeah, throw a little squirt out oil in there on the bottom. It looks a little dry. Sponsored by Nike. Just, just where you're going to cook, yeah. Put the dirty sock in there. And then, <laughs> there you go. Oh, that looks good. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Put that meat in there and spread it out, but don't pre don't press it down. Yep. Bada bing, bada boom. Oh, that look that looks good. Can you smell it? Oh, uh, you know what? I, I can. It's not working. So you want to keep that on there. You know, yep. you want to get a little sear on it. So you keep let it sit there for a little bit, but you got to make sure that heat's on high, bro. Um, oh, one thing that's, that yeah, one, one thing that's actually pretty cool is that when you, uh, are, you could take that meat out and let it sit a little bit, get almost room temperature before you cook it. Because when you put that cold meat, like right out of the fridge into a hot pan, it brings the temperature of the pan down and you're not going to sear. Well, you're going to kind of steam a little. We left that on the counter for like the last 20 minutes too. So oh, that's good. That's good. That's good. 
you know, turn um, them over a little bit, see how, how it's looking. Hey, Ross, can you tell yes, us what your favorite type of chef's knife is? I, uh, yeah, yeah. Actually, I got a, I got a few. Um, I, I like uh, big knives, you know. I, I very rarely use a, uh, a smaller knife. I use a probably a 10-inch, uh, like a, it's a French knife. Uh, old friends of mine from Johnson & Wales, a uh, pro chef, make a knife that I, I, I use every day. Mm-hmm. I use it every day. It's got a 30 degree angle on the blade. So the blade goes down in the, in the, the handle, oops, sorry, lost my earpiece on that maneuver. The, the, um, the blade is like, say the blade is straight and then the handle goes down 30 degrees. That way you're cutting on a, a basically a ergo designed knife as if, if, if that's a word, what happens is uh, ergonomics. It's, it's definitely uh, ergonomics at its best. So that's me looking good. Keep moving it around now. So yep. we don't want to see that liquid in there right. because what happens is uh, the liquid in the meat will, will come out a little bit if it's not hot enough. So keep turning and moving it. And then when it looks like it's brown on all sides there, Dan, yep. uh, mix in the onions. In there, buddy. No, no, no. I, I, I want you to mix it, blend it with the meat. With the meat. Man, it got dark in here right, real quick. Yeah, so I don't know about your rocks, but the main, the main inspiration for the show is because all I've been doing with my time is cooking and eating. That's right. You're, but, you know, you. I don't know how you're spending quarantine, but I'm putting on the pounds. <laughs> You know, it's funny. I'm talking to a lot of people and throughout the day, and that's the biggest problem. I'll be sitting here. I'll, I'll have, like, a big breakfast. At like, I usually get up at, like, 5.30, so I'll eat breakfast, like, 6. And then the next thing you know, it's, like, 8 o'clock, and I'm going, man, I'm a little hungry, a little peckish, a little peckish. <laughs> and I'll go, and I'll have a little peck of something. And then the next thing I know, it's, ooh, it's a lunchtime at 11 o'clock. Let's go and eat. And then dinner, Wait, you know? I'm I, I'm uh, I'm live on the air right now, so talk to mom. Uh, so anyway, uh, as far as you know, I wanted to get back to the knives for a second. Hey, I just saw uh, Oscar was just on. I don't know if he's still on with us, but hello, uh, Oscar. The whole team's back so, together. So that's good. So so the meat is looking good. So you can blend that in there with the uh, the onions so they start to get those flavor profiles yep. blending together. Hey, my brother's on the line. What's up, my brother? Nice Ooh, mix. chocolate mousse for dessert. Sounds like a deal. <laughs> so try not to make it too mushy. I mean, it's yep. hard to tell in the, in, in the view. Yeah, just let it keep cooking. And, uh, yeah, and that's nice and hot, and it's looking good. Nice. Here's what you don't want to do. You don't want to, Dan, you don't want to cook it all the way through right now. Keep it on a high heat. Uh, only because you still have other ingredients to put in there and some simmering to go in with a sauce. Yeah. So you don't want to cook it like well done right now because if not, you know, if you finish this dish in 10 minutes, you know, it's going to be real dry meat. Yeah, you know, you, you, don't want our bread to be cold. you don't want to overcook it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So I noticed you had a little wine in that bottle, in that in that little jar. Yep, add it. You got to deglaze it. So you're gonna. So when you deglaze a pan, it could be with any kind of liquid, but I like the red wine because when it reduces, it gives it a that meat a real rich flavor. Uh, the red wine gets condensed down. So as long as that pan is nice and hot, you can pour that red wine in there. And what that'll do is it'll steam a little bit, and it's going to pull all the little goodies that are stuck on the bottom of the pan. Yeah. And when that happens, that is enhanced flavor. 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 Welcome to flavor. Flavor. Uh, flavor. No, not flavor. Time. This is flavor, as we say in the uh, Casarino household. Right, Where's the flavor, huh? So my take Good stuff. Out. And then so, adding the wine or leaving it in? No, leave it all in there. Yeah, okay. leave it in there. You're putting the wine in. It's going to pull up all those goodies. We're going to create a sauce. Wine. 
right in there. Yeah, and then just move it around so it coats the whole bottom. Yep. Nice. I see my boys at Quick Tap, Quick Tap Rugby uh, dot podcast are on. I've must been be studying. Must be CJ or Nate. <laughs> the boys. The whole rugby team ready to eat. Yeah, you know you can check out our uh, podcast, Quick Tap Rugby dot podcast. You can go to any of the uh, podcast servers. We're on all of them, from uh, Stitcher to uh, Twitcher to uh, all, all, all of them. I mean, you know, I, we're on iTunes. We're on iTunes. We're on Spotify. We're on YouTube. We just finished uh, one yesterday. We also have a uh, charity that we're doing with the San Diego Food Bank. Oh, you so go. you can go to our uh, one of those sites. Uh, we have Show 7 coming up today. And um, it'll tell you all about how you can help if you're uh, in this from anywhere, really. Just like what, what, what you're doing, I think you and Nic Nicolette came up with a great idea to help the uh, hospitality employees yeah, of Rhode Island. Uh, Rhode Island. I, I think it's fantastic. So how's that smelling? It smells delicious. So now that you cooked some of that red wine out a little bit, yep. now you're going to add the tomato sauce. All right. And are you using like a pureed tomato? Is that what you got? Yeah, it was crushed. Crushed red tomatoes. Crushed red tomatoes are good because we already have oregano. We got garlic. It's like you're making sauce right in the pan. So pour that in. Mix that around so it all blends with all the other flavors. Yep. So I can smell it from here. I mean, this is, oh. I wish I could have given you a beer. <laughs> yeah. I know. You should got to send me some in a bucket. Oops. Just dropped the damn phone. There we go. <laughs> so you have, a, you have a couple other ingredients to add there, right? Yep. We still got a lot of spices and we got our olives. Yep. Put the olives in now. Okay. You could put in the, um, what do we have, a little parsley, right? You already put that in. No, I got A little crushed red pepper. Crushed red pepper, salt. And salt and pepper. Now, remember, if you don't want it hot, don't put in the crushed red pepper. Oh, we like it spicy here. But, but we do, and I, and I know that, Dan the man. <laughs> you know, a lot of people don't realize that we were roommates. No. In, in uh, Philadelphia, <laughs> when we did the pop-up restaurant. I keep having to explain to people how I know you. And you were well, well, I mean, not. <laughs> we're what got me through Philadelphia. You and your <laughs> Sheila. <laughs> oh. Should we tell that story? Oh my God! <laughs> she was you know, all you need to know. Yeah, exactly. Well, we we ended up running a pop up restaurant for Deeds and Watson in a beer garden with Mr. Donnelly and team, and it was quite the experience. We did it uh, for the whole summer. Uh, it was quite. I mean, it was incredible. They they basically had twenty of them around the city, and they were empty lots in between buildings. And they had, like, in our case, I think we had the Philadelphia Horticulture come in and, and design it with flowers and plants. And then uh, Mr. Donnelly helped uh, design uh, all the um, all the tables and chairs. And, like, on a Friday night, we'd have, like, 600 people in there. And they had a beer garden, someone who owned a, uh, a pub uh, that made their own beer, a brewery. And on we average, did all we the food. To, on average, we worked approximately 19 hours a day. Yeah, that wasn't bad at all. <laughs> I, I don't think I, looking back on it, I don't know how we did that. Like, I don't know how to function without eight hours of sleep anymore. <laughs> no, you know, I mean, we didn't sleep a lot, did we? We were working our, it took us off. The time that we could have been sleeping, we were busy giving out pretzels to the locals. <laughs> yeah, you know, we'd, we'd find a couple of pubs to get a cold one at the end. Dirty Franks, Philadelphia, baby. Dirty Franks. So, so Dan, now is the time. Turn that down to a simmer, yep. a low heat, because you don't want to boil too much. You're going to remove some of the liquid. See, all that steam is evaporation of the liquid you have in the pan, and you want to have some of that sauce to soak into that delicious sirloin meat. Did you get that at the grocery store? Some sirloin tips from Dave's Marketplace. The only oh, Dave's Market. <laughs> yeah, um, what do they have, like seven, seven stores? Rock, was Dan a good roommate in Philly? <laughs> I kept things a little you know, like it, but we were fine. Dan likes it cold. 
So now it's like 97 degrees outside. And then we would have like, like sometimes we'd have the, we'd finish our prep, we'd have the morning, you know, to kind of kick back. And we'd go there and watch a little TV or a read. Uh, Dan, Dan, you were like a little Eskimo. You had uh, your, your hoodie yeah. on. I kept the AC blasted on my <laughs> 32 degrees. You like your cold. You like your cold. Let's just, say, let's just say I wore a, a parka in Philly in the middle of summer. That no, was cold. It was cold. So now, you want to turn on your broiler in your oven? It is on low. Is that okay, or do you want to on high? Uh, you know, um, I don't know how hot yours cooks. Is it gas or electric? You got gas, right? Gas. gas. Dan, always brag that you have gas. <laughs> oh, I learned that from you in Philly. Yeah. <laughs> don't stand behind me. Anyway, uh, uh, low, low is okay. Put the bread in. Just make sure it's not so close. Is it uh, in the door or on the bottom? Let me see. It's on the top. Okay. You know what? That's good. Slide your bread in there. Try to keep it all, all in there underneath the uh, flames. Yep. I mean, normally I would say hi, but, you know, you guys can watch it. And I had it on for the past 10 minutes. Oh, so it's hot enough. Yeah, so you want to just toast the top of that bread. And low is good because it, it, it'll it warm up the bread as well without making it dry out. So, Dan, how's that sauce looking? I can't really see it. Let me see. Picking it up. We got a couple little watery areas, but aside from that, it looks good. No, but you want you want some sauce. Yeah, you don't want to yeah, dry it out. Yeah. yeah it so, it, so it's looking good. You can turn it off. Okay. Because you can have what you call carryover cooking. You know, that's going to still cook while it's... Uh, while it's in that pan, especially that cast iron, man, that'll keep it hot for like an hour. Yeah, that's why I'm telling you, it, it definitely got hot immediately. <laughs> so, Dan, there's uh, a couple of things. You want to taste it first? Put a little spoon in there. <laughs> hey, you're getting, your sister's giving you some instructions. Make sure you don't burn the bread like mom does. <laughs> She's watching and she heard They're them. watching. Yeah, they, they want you to burn the bread. <laughs> Go ahead, give it a try. Mostly the sauce well, and a little piece of the meat. A little piece of steak, don't worry. Yeah, because you want to you want to see if you need to add a little salt and pepper or a little bit more. I can taste the oregano. <laughs> yeah, nice. It's a big. Salt. Oh wait, can you taste the wine in there too? A little bit. Nice. I'm going to add a little salt, though. Yeah, feel free. You could add a little salt, a little pepper. Always remember you could put more in. You can't take it out once you put it in. Mm -hmm. So, unfortunately, I see a lot of people's over-season at the beginning of the cooking process. I've been, and then it's a little late after that, uh, you know. I think I've been watching a lot of things between YouTube and Netflix and all that. Do you always... Like, I, I'm seeing a lot of mixed reviews. Do you season before you put food in the pan, or do you see it, wait for it to heat up? And I'm like, I've I wait. In, in a dish like you're making, I would. Season? I, I, I would I, what I like to do is if uh, in a dish like that where the sauce cooks out a little bit, I season it up at the end because okay. pepper has a tendency to get really hot if it's real good pepper the longer you cook it. Black pepper. Uh, also, the crushed red pepper releases a little bit of heat, uh, and then you don't want to oversalt it. So you know. Yeah, yeah. Now I got it. So people could always salt their food if they want a little more. But I like, I like, you know, don't be afraid to use salt. People are yeah. always afraid. Oh, I can't. Now, if it's dietary, I can understand, you know, why you wouldn't want, you know, if you can't use that much salt. But if you can, I mean, that's an enhancer. That actually pulls out. What the hell? This thing keeps falling out of my ear. Anyway, so now, uh, Nick, Nicolette, give it a try. Oh, God, okay. I want you to try to see how your taste buds are on there. Does it need anything else? Um, Dan is luckily my quarantine buddy, so I'm going to like... Using the same spoon! <laughs> <laughs> Now we're getting uh, words from uh, your family to check the damn bread. Uh, Dad's getting nervous. <laughs> check the bread. Well, you should check the bread. Nah, it's, it's still good ways to get. Okay. Worthy. <laughs> is it good? It's good. That's well, I'll have, I'll have to tell you there was a, um, 
a pub. I can't remember what town it is. Outside of Boston, we used to go to, and they had the best sirloin tips. They were known for their sirloin tips. And I used to go there with uh, Big Tommy Piasek and a few of the other boys, you know, my old partner Lee and um, whoever else was around. And we'd go there and have sirloin tips and beer. Not bad. So that was kind of a little spark. I mean, they kind of just saw it pay up the tips, you know, and put them over the bread and soak up all the juice and everything. So, um, <laughs> brother Jean, get the potatoes out of here. <laughs> Come on over here. <laughs> so, Dan, one thing you are missing, yeah. and maybe uh, Nicolette's got it, the the wine, the extra wine. you got to have wine to drink, right? Oh. Are you going to do a beer with this? We actually we have some extra wine in the other room. That's okay. I mean, it goes great with wine. Right now, Any kind of. Uh... So I told you this on my on the test stream, but all together. That's we're right. Brewed by other half in New York, and then okay. they, basically, they basically put out the um, recipe online for any brewery to copy. So like Proclamation did it in Rhode Island and a whole bunch of others. And I got this from Buttonwoods. But basically it's the same recipe and they're donating money from every sale to. Oh, nice. Nice. Well, check that bread again. Because once it starts to caramelize and get dark, it happens real fast. It's starting. It's starting? Is it yeah. starting to turn a little light brown? I can't yeah. really see. There's not a little light in there. But... I'll pull it out. Where's your broiler one out? Um... Your... No, I don't think the broiler went out. I, I just can't see light in there. Oh, it's getting all to Oh, that's looking good. That's perfect. Take it out. Right. Yeah, you don't want to overcook it. And then it gets like a rock. Take notes. Go, hey, hey. And not that's a bad <laughs> thing. You know what I'm talking about over here. No, it's, um, that's perfect. Switch. Now, uh, you know what? I'm going to let you plate the way you think you wanted to plate it. Okay. Feed me. Do you hear, do you hear the people in the background are yelling, feed me? The I know. Doesn't that feed. look good? So now, Dan, this, there's a couple things you could do. You could serve this. Uh, you could serve it over pasta, like linguine. Yeah. Uh, you could serve it over rice. Uh, you can just put it on the plate with the garlic bread. I, I like. I could do do it the way you want to do, and then I'll tell you what I like to do. Okay. I was say, we did not prepare anything else, so it's just going to be on the plate with the garlic bread. That's fine. You can do whatever you want to do. You're the sous chef. You're the chef in control there. Watch your back. I'm going to be the chef soon. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. You mean I could retire? <laughs> Not quite. <laughs> people want people want doggy bags, Dan. It ships really well to Hawaii and San Diego. There you go. The cave you and whoever else is out there. <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah. I think you did great. I mean, I wish I was that close to get a little batch. But it does look good. And that tomato sauce and the red wine, it goes so well with the sirloin tips. And um, it makes for a nice meal. Something quick. You know, and I always suggest when people are doing a dish like that to double the dish and then have some for leftovers for something another day. Or you can freeze it, you know, and then uh, you have a meal already made. Freeze, freezing the meal is always the key. Unfortunately, at my house, we never have any leftovers. Well, so. <laughs> I know you finish your meal, and then you find a way to make it work for breakfast. There you go. Oh, I, I, that would be good with some fried eggs over the top. Now, I, I usually hit it with a little extra Parmesan, and if you have a little parsley. Oh, I'm not done yet. Don't look. Ooh, oh, the man going crazy. Man You're going crazy. crazy. Um, hey, can you tell us an alternative protein if we don't have beef or we don't have yes. beef? Yes, actually... Um, this would be good with, I mean, um, obviously, if you don't eat meat, a lot of times you, uh, no retirement for me. Yeah. Uh, if you don't eat beef, uh, maybe you don't eat pork either, you know. Uh, this could work on chicken. Mm. This would be a great chicken dish. It would almost be like a kitchen a chicken cacciatore. And I would go with bowl chicken breast. How'd I do? Oh, excellent. That looks nice. Look, look like green on top, but aside from that, I think it looks pretty good. Yeah. No, no, that looks great. <laughs> I would eat it. I mean, another way to do it is you have the whole, like if you're going to serve a family style, you can cut it up, put the whole garlic bread in the middle, and yeah. then top it with all the meat, and it soaks up all the juice. Yeah. Uh, or you can do individual plates that way. The garlic bread's so thick, it wasn't really going to be a, a dippable thing. 
No, that's good. So I want to answer Chris's question. I know you asked, you know, and obviously it would be chicken you could put in there. But I, I made a similar dish last night. Hello. I made a similar dish last night with eggplant. So I put eggplant in there. I diced up the eggplant, sauteed it up with mushrooms and onions. Same type of thing. I made the little sauce. And it was delicious. You can do it with tofu. I mean, if you like tofu. What the heck? Oh, I can't respond to her directly. Mary. You gave us yeast today. If you want dinner, I'll cook you up some food. <laughs> <laughs> Rock. What do you think? Understand. We've been looking. I've been trying to bake bread. Right. The what was once a what was once a paper towel and toilet paper shortage has since turned flour. into a yeast and flour shortage. <laughs> so we were able to yeah. Make oh, definitely. Flour, but Mary bought like three pounds of yeast and she donated me half a pound. <laughs> uh, that that's crazy. <laughs> Hey, you know, uh, I got another question here uh, from Mr. Valley. If you could use fish. Uh, yeah, you can use fish. I would use something that's a little heavier duty uh, with that will stay together when you cook it. Uh, but I would do uh, the procedure a little different. I would do the, uh, the onions and the mushrooms, push it off to the side, and have room to cook the fish. But I would use like a, maybe a swordfish or a halibut, uh, something a little sturdier. Uh, and then cut the fish up into pieces first. So I take those up and then pull them out. Then put the sauce in, make the sauce with the, uh, the wine and the, uh, tomatoes. Simmer that down, then add the, the fish back in at the end and don't mix it around. Just get it coated in the sauce and then put that over. Oh, that would be awesome over, uh, you know, some, uh, fettuccine, you know. A little uh, freshly grated parmesan. Mm. Freshly made a little bit of leaf. It's enough, huh? So uh, to wrap this up, again, we were doing this all kind of, we're going to do this weekly. Rock's just going to keep sending me a shopping list. I'm going to sure. keep not knowing what we're making. Um, but the ultimate goal here is to raise money for the Rowan Hospitality Relief Fund. The right. link is in our bio. Uh, huge thank you to Alicia for setting us up and allowing us to partner with them and we hope that you enjoyed episode one of the 1-800 chef show thank you good job dan let's do it again flow start with the butter but i'll catch you next week buddy go with the white wine <laughs> stay tuned white, wine, uh, we'll for, have white wine for episode. fish <laughs> there you go. stay tuned and uh, tune in next week we will hopefully have this up on youtube and edited together by the weekend that'll be fun thanks it was a blast See you soon, buddy now i gotta go make dinner <laughs> Love you, stay safe. Enjoy the cooking. <laughs> Give me a noogie, big noogie. Bye, Nicola. Great job. <laughs>